This is the Skoda Kamiq. It is the smallest and the most affordable SUV in Skoda's lineup today. Above this, we have the Karok midsize and of course, the huge Kodiak. It is quite a mouthful to be honest. I have no idea why Skoda decided to call their cars such, but if you realize all their SUV starts with K and ends with a Q. Again, don't ask me why. If you ask me, I'll just tell you it's a marketing gimmick of some sorts. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, good news is the Kamiq is a good looking SUV with all these split daytime running lights as well as LED headlights. Something like what Citroen has been doing for years with their C4 Aircross and C3 Aircross. I don't know. I, I don't even remember the names because it's been so long. Now, this trim is a top of the line Monte Carlo trim. So you've got Ambition as the base, style in the middle and Monte Carlo as the top of the line trim. Even the name sounds cool, Monte Carlo. With this trim, you get this deck blacked out grille right here, more aggressive uh, bumper and some other stuff at the back. So let's check it out. Monte Carlo. Now at the back, everything is same, blacked out. You get black Monica here, and even the Skoda lettering right here is all in black. Now, it kind of stands out significantly because the colour of the car is in bright red. Not really my cup of tea, but I'm just wondering, if you actually buy the Kamiq in black, in Monte Carlo, you'll be able to see nothing. So that's cool, I, I guess. <laughs> now, a lot of you guys must be wondering, you know what? This compact crossover is just another hatchback on stilts, and you are not wrong. But where the Kamiq stands out is space. Now, Skoda has very cleverly engineered the car to maximize space and everything here shows. The boot space is 400 litres. That's 20 litres more than the Volkswagen Golf. With that, you can actually easily store a luggage as well as the anti-trolley. It won't pass the anti-trolley length test for sure. But here's the thing. Because there's really no load lid, Dragging things in and out is a walk in the park. And if you decide to say, you know what, I need uh, more space for my IKEA stuff, all you have to do is just knock the seats down as such. More stuff for your IKEA moving uh, expedition. Uh, you have hooks right here so you can actually tap out food to actually, you know, hang stuff here. But other than that, well, you got more cubby holes like in here and all that kind of stuff to store your tapao food. The good thing is you can even have a compartment below. So you can actually store more stuff if you want to. You can actually just slide this out and put this underneath. Smart, eh? The Skoda Kamiq is priced from $135,900 to $143,900. The 1.5-litre turbocharged engine produces 148 brake horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. The 7-speed automatic transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in 8.3 seconds. For more details on the Skoda Kamiq or any other car, head on to sgkarma.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. This seat has been adjusted to John's sitting position as usual and even with that, I'm getting a lot of leg room, like literally a lot. I'm literally having to move my entire body to show you just how much leg room there is and obviously a lot of headroom as well. I suspect people who are up to 1.8 meters tall will be able to fit here with absolutely no problems at all. Now you get um, fabric upholstery, which is I would think this is actually a lot better than uh, leather upholstery because it's not as hot and it cools down a lot faster than leather upholstery when you're parking the car under the sun. It might not be a, uh, for everybody's cup of tea, but it's definitely mine, so I kind of like it. Uh, however, there is one little problem. I don't understand why um, this car being a front-wheel drive car, the hump is actually really, really... Uh, high up and to put matters worse the seat in the center is actually a little bit elevated so when you sit here the, I just feel really uncomfortable a little bit uncomfortable um, I can put my legs down like this it's fine but you kind of realize that the people beside you might not exactly have that much of a space so this car might actually be best left for two instead of three at the back 
um, when you are just alone and you're sitting by the side, you can pull this down. You can enjoy a cup of coffee, no problemo. Um, if you have a, you know, child seat, this isofix points will be good for that, which is why I think if you are a family of say three, you have one kid, this car would be perfect for you because you can still sit uh, an adult here with the kid. But the moment you have two, I really don't think an adult will be able to squeeze in the center at all. But that said, this car comes with a lot of good stuff as well. First and foremost, it comes with rear aircon vents, which is a very, very important thing in Singapore. Secondly, roof lining is all black in color, so it kind of enhances the whole sportiness of the car, especially when the car is red. When you open the door like this, right, and you see how red this is, the contrast is just really great and it kind of gives you that feeling of aggression for some reason very very sporty uh, also comes with magazine pockets right here excellent now when you're in the front seat everything looks very clean and very simple which is exactly what you should be looking out for but anyway first things first um, i'm faced with a really sporty steering wheel bottom shave red trim uh, which by the way only comes with a monte carlo trim um, I like the steering, it's very sporty, however, this perforation right here really isn't up my alley. I don't quite like it because this portion here, the top portion is actually smooth. The rest of it is all perforated. So if you're the kind of person who can't really stand small little holes, this might not be up your alley. You might want to change to something else. But that said, this to me, in my opinion, is probably one of the nicest looking steering wheels because of the buttons and the controls and everything here, the knobs. It's very futuristic, um, it's, very, it's very current, and I definitely like that. Beyond the steering wheel is a 10.25 fully digital instrument cluster. Uh, you can actually customize how you want the instrument cluster to look like with the press of a button. So you can get rid of, uh, well, you, you can actually have the taco and the speedo at the same time. All the information you need is right here. The range left, fuel economy, your aircon, um, also and so forth. All there, which is really, really nice. Now, right beside it, this is an 8-inch infotainment touchscreen system. Very good to use, no lag whatsoever. You can go into the radio, you can go into 91.3, 1FM, listen to the music. You can even have Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. Below here, climate control, I'm on 17 degrees because I'm just crazy hot. Um, but there is no option for you here, physical option at least, to adjust the fan speed, which is kind of annoying. So in order to adjust the fan speed, I have to press the menu button right here and adjust the fan speed via the infotainment screen. I don't know why. It clears up buttons, but I reckon these are, the, these are the stuff that you have to meddle with on a daily basis and it should be here. Below that, you get two USB-C ports and wireless charging. Gear lever, you have a start-stop button and the driving modes. And of course, you get old-school traditional handbrake. Now, the biggest disadvantage of the handbrake is that you no longer get auto-hold. You don't have an option to auto-hold the car. Uh, which is my favorite, you don't have that. Um, but the advantage is you can try doing drifts with this, I guess. You can try doing like, I don't know, skits and all that kinds of stuff. Uh, you get two cup holders right here. It's a bit too small for you to put regular water bottles, um, but the 330 something Coke cans will be able to fit in for sure. Hole here, cubby hole, and more cubby hole at the side. The seats that I'm on, relatively comfortable, it's quite sporty, hugs you well. Everything looks fine. There is even a sun roof here. The cool part of this is I thought it was going to roll this way, but no, it actually rolls from the back front, not from the front to the back. So that's, that's my first time seeing it roll from the back to the front, actually. So you get this. So kind of just lightens up the ambience a little bit, especially if you get this trim, which is completely black with some red um, color around it. This just lightens up the whole cabin. Right, let's find out how the car drives now, shall we? So the Kamig right here 
is a 1.5 litre turbocharged engine pumps out some 148 brake horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. Um, Singapore offers this 1.5 litre turbocharged, but other countries they actually come in one litre turbocharged three cylinder engine, which is kind of interesting, I feel. Um, but I think you can't replace. Uh, displacement no way so this 1.5 liter is a lot more punchier than other one liter three cylinders that I've tried before obviously um, it's quite immediate I must say upon acceleration the good thing is this car takes 8.3 seconds from not to 100 you feel a lot quicker because when you pedal to the metal the car just pushes all the way like all turbocharged Skoda cars but I've been driving this car for several days now I mean I tried driving like a maniac around bends and twisties. It does hold its own very well. But here's the thing. This car only comes in a front wheel drive. It only comes in a front wheel drive uh, uh, configuration. It doesn't come with an all wheel drive configuration, unfortunately. So when you push too hard into the bends, you kind of feel that the car is losing control a little bit. You, you, you feel like it's under steering a little bit so you don't really want to push it that hard but i suspect even though this car handles like a hatch buyers of the coming will not really bother so much about driving like an idiot like i do <laughs> because i think they'll just probably go for the space with this car aces the grace and even the pace now as we enter the highway um the coming sort of feels right at home you know what i mean like with the full 148 brake horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque um, from the word go, it is very easy to keep up with the pack. Overtaking maneuvers like this is just done with ease, confidence, and that's exactly what's important when you're getting a car like a compact crossover such as a Kamek. However, I reckon because it's drizzling now. Uh, maybe it's just in my mind, I'm just playing with it, right? Uh, this car, like I said, it's only a front-wheel driven variant. There's no all-wheel drive configuration for the Kamek, at least not now, and maybe not any anytime soon. I kind of wish that there was an all-wheel drive variant, but I suspect buyers of this car, is not, they're not going to be bothered by all this. In fact, if you're like a first-time buyer, um, or if you've got one kid on the way, the Kamek should be right up your alley. And should you be deciding to get a compact crossover or even a Kamek for that matter, I reckon the Monte Carlo variant has to be the weapon of choice. The style is alright, you don't quite get the bells and the whistles. The ambition is just far too base for you to even waste your money on. So this is really a sweet spot. And I just love how comfortable this car really is. I mean, it just soaks up everything with very little or no vibrations being sent to the cabin. And what I, th I think what really takes the cake is, it's a very peaceful drive. I just feel very relaxed because I can hear a little bit of wind noise from a pillar and the side mirror, but just very bare minimal. I mean, I'm probably saying this because the radio is not turned on and I can hear everything else, but road noise is literally bare minimum. It's all kept well at bay. I think that's, to me, that's really a very, very good thing for a compact crossover. So the Skoda Kamek, is it a will buy, won't buy, or go try? I'm stuck in between will buy and go try. And it's really only because of the pricing. The COE for Cat B right now, as time of at time of recording, is about sixty thousand ish. And when the Skoda Kamek Monte Carlo trim sets you back at one hundred forty three thousand ish, it's really nothing Skoda can do about it. It's really not their fault. It's really the fault of our COE system. Hence, it is a go try for me only because of the price. Because if Cat B was going to be down back to the usual 40-ish thousand. This is definitely a will buy. It's well spec, drives well, looks good, it feels good. There's really nothing to fault the coming really. Unfortunately, because of the price, it's a go try for me. 
So there you have it guys, that is the review of the Skoda Kamiq. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I have driven the car. Um, please do share this video with your friends and family and do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that, um, you know, we can at least get in touch with you and we can at least hear you out if you have any comments or any requests. Speaking of comments, please do leave your comments in the comment box below and let us know whether or not you will buy, won't buy or go try the Skoda Kamek. In the meantime, stay safe, be well, ciao!